Having recently built this component tester, I thought it would be fun to take a look at uh, a range of components and see uh, what it makes of them, especially some vintage parts. So back in the day, this uh, choke or inductor, you can see has screw terminals attached to it, as indeed does this variable resistor, or should we say rheostat, these days we, we breadboard stuff all the time for Arduino projects and what have you, but originally the term breadboard came, as you can see in the photograph here, because the parts were screwed down literally to uh, a piece of breadboard and then wired up. And this is a, a variable capacitor. So in those days you would vary the capacitance by sliding the plates, as you can see here. So without further ado, let's put some of these components into the tester and uh, see what it makes of them. Testing resistors is not particularly tricky. It is a good idea to make up a, a lead um, with some little test clips in that uh, enable you to test some components uh, more easily. And this is marked as 22,000 ohms, 10%. This is the oldest one I could find out of, a, out of an old radio. And that's measuring 23.75k, so that's within 10% of, uh, of 22, so it's still good. With the variable resistor, we can see here the two values for each side of the component. So 68 ohms on one side, 61 on the other. If we make a move on the slider, so move it up towards this end. We can now see there's only 29 ohms on one side and 98 on, on the other. That's a useful check for variable resistors. This is one of the oldest capacitors I could find. Uh, I think this dates from the 1930s and it's by the Dubalier company, uh, still going today, founded by William Dubalier, famous uh, radio engineer, and it's marked as 0003 microfarads, or we will probably say today 300 picofarads. So I wonder what it measures now. 276 picofarads. For something that's probably knocking on 80 years plus, um, that is not half bad. So is that a capacitor? To paraphrase Crocodile Dundee, no, that's a capacitor. Again, by the Dubalier company, um, this I think would be around the 1950s or 60s, and eight microfarads at 400 volts. Very important with these devices to make sure there's no charge in the capacitor. Now, this hasn't been charged for decades, but uh, just for the avoidance of doubt, we can short it out. Let's see what it measures. 7,748 nanofarads, so as near as damn it, 8 microfarads, and an ESR of 0.37. Even after decades, um, this is uh, still uh, a valid capacitor. Our variable capacitor is similarly marked as 0 0.0005 microfarads. With all the veins closed, we're seeing 465 picofarads. If I open the veins out, we go down to just 12.6 picofarads. So clearly this is still working perfectly as well. This high frequency choke is just a specialized type of inductor used in radio circuits to choke off the, the higher frequencies. So it will only pass DC and uh, the lower frequencies which are required. Testing the component clearly shows it's an inductor with 181 ohms resistance, an inductance of 78 millihenries, and a resonant frequency of around about 100 kilohertz and a Q of around 12. Once again, this is uh, still a, a valid component. I wonder how many of you recognize this guy. This is a, an early type of semiconductor uh, known as a selenium rectifier. So this is a rectifying diode 
arrangement and it's metal plates um, with a special coating simply bolted together and you can find these most commonly in old um, radios and battery chargers and things like that. If we take a measurement of it it is indeed detected as uh, a diode and the forward voltage drop uh, much higher than you will probably expect if you're not familiar with these devices a forward voltage drop here of 2.7 volts. A rough rule of thumb for these guys is uh, one volt per plate so the two, two plates uh, here so that explains the, uh, the reading of, of two volts and a bit for the forward voltage drop. After selenium rectifiers came germanium. Um, this little guy from the Mullard company, sadly no longer with us, is an OA81 germanium point contact diode. There's a known issue with these. Um, they are very difficult to, to test uh, because of the residual current inherent in them. And indeed it's just detected as a, as a small capacitor there, 33 picofarads. Now this is mentioned in the documentation, so in the, there'll be a link in the description to the uh, release notes for this firmware. Uh, it does say that um, possibly it can be detected if it's cooled down. I don't have any freezer spray at the moment, so I'm just going to pop that into the freezer and we'll check it again a little later. Coming up to date, here is a, a standard silicon diode. And this measures more as we would expect as a, as a diode with a forward voltage of 0.625. So a uh, rule of thumb for silicon diodes is a uh, forward voltage drop of around about 0.7. Uh, we can check that with our old friend, the 1N4148. And that uh, 0.709 forward voltage drop and the other information there. So diodes, again, no problem at all. Let's turn our attention for a moment to uh, light emitting diodes. Now the tester proves especially useful as it will indicate to you the working voltage that you need. So here we can see the forward voltage 1.7 volts. So many times, personally, I pull LEDs and things from, from old equipment and you're not sure what uh, what the forward voltage is going to be, here it uh, clearly shows you. Even straight from the freezer, the germanium diode uh, still only appears as a, as a capacitor. Never mind. I've dug through my collection of old transistors and uh, found a couple to, to test. And we can see what the tester makes of these. I know that these two are germanium, uh, another good old Mallard OC28 there and Delco. So let's connect this guy up, for example. So it identifies this as a programmable unijunction transistor, which it's not really. It's just a normal power transistor, but again, being germanium, it has uh, confused the tester. The OC28 is correctly identified as a PNP transistor. This guy dates from 1970, uh, Motorola. Uh, correctly identified there. What about this guy? I can recognize the mark there as Siliconics and 1978 uh, VN64GA. So the Siliconics device has been identified here as a MOSFET. Last but not least, a dear friend from the past, uh, the favored power transistor of its day, 1973. This one, uh, used in many amplifiers. And there we have it, the NPN transistor. Just with its little mounting holder there. Let's do one final little transistor. And that again is a, an N, NJFET. And that is 2N5485. As you can tell, I'm liking this little transistor tester, component tester. I like it a lot. There is even more to it. If we press and long hold the power button, we get to a menu where we can test the frequency. There is a port inside. Uh, I need to wire a connector for that. 
where you can measure frequency. It can also generate frequency. Uh, it can give you a, a pulse width modulation signal. You can test just um, capacitor ESR. You can correct, if you have another calibrated source, you can correct the uh, capacitance measurement here. The self-test that we saw in the build video to calibrate the system, change the contrast of the screen, show the recorded data inside, and finally switch off. So we'll go through those in, a, in another video. This video was really just for the basic component testing side of it. And in another video, we'll take a look at those frequency and uh, other options.